Uh, good evening. My name is Joshua King. I'm an Army combat veteran, a deputy sheriff for Fairfax County, and hopefully I'll be the next delegate uh, for the 2nd District, which covers uh, Woodbridge and Stafford. I want to tell you guys why I'm running. Uh, this year I had a, uh, well, I would call it a tragedy. I have a daughter who has autism. She's 12 years old now. And last year, she went the whole school year without a teacher. Uh, people were asking me, like, how did this happen? And so I'll briefly tell you that um, me and my wife and I, we've been struggling to get services for our, for our daughter. And we're not talking about just a school teacher. We're talking about optometrists, uh, daycare, you name it, uh, special needs, anything, adaptive sports or whatever. So we have a, a big a lack of those uh, services here in the 2nd District. So uh, the, my daughter's teacher, she was uh, studying ABA, and she went to get the hair master's degree uh, last summer. She had a child, and uh, she went to get her master's degree. After she came back, she uh, went to the county and she said, listen, I need more money. I just had a child. I need to uh, pay for my student loan, and I need more money, you know. And the county said, listen, we don't have any more money. So the teacher wrote a nice letter to us. The teacher said, listen, I love my job, but I need to move on. So she went to another county. So we went to the school. The school said, listen, we're going to start a school year in two teachers' days from the last school year are going to teach, but we're going to advertise the job. So we said, okay, we'll wait. So we do our IEP, get everything that we have to do. And uh, school starts, no teacher. You get to uh, October, no teacher. December, no teacher. Christmas break comes back, still no teacher. So school said, we're advertising the job, but no more work for less. Just like the turnover rate for special needs teachers is very high. If you if you all know anything about special needs uh, teachers, they don't get paid any extra, and that job is that much harder. And uh, then you're looking at a class that has uh, seven kids inside. You have one that's a headbanger, one that's a runner. They're all in the spectrum, but they're all different. So they all need their special in, uh, uh, individual uh, education plan called the IEP. So I want to say that one reason why I'm running is because we need our fair share for our schools because our teachers deserve better and our children deserve better. Nobody, nobody asked about my daughter. Nobody cared that we had that we lost a teacher. No one knew that. Uh, no one cared that the, the kids in there were Republican or Democrat. These were six or seven kids that didn't have a teacher. That is unacceptable in the Commonwealth, and that is why I'm running. I want to make sure that this never happens to another child. Thank you. We all have motivations that drive us to uh, put ourselves out here, like Mr. King and I have. Um, you know, I can, most of you that have known me for a long time. I, I sat up there for six years, so this is kind of home for me. I sat in that middle chair for the last two years. I was on the Board of Supervisors. And if you want to see what a photographer can do in doctoring pictures, my picture's right there on the wall, right there. So, uh, <clears throat> I believe that there's a lot we can do in Stafford County. Everyone knows that my passion has always been on the transportation side. Although many of the things that I've accomplished and done are outside that realm because you find out that if you are singly motivated, you get to where you're going and there are a lot of other issues that need to be addressed. So when I got on the Board of Supervisors, while I still had this passion for, for transportation and making our roads safe, I found out that there are Many, many, many issues in Stafford. And I'm proud of the fact that there were so many accomplishments. I hate to say that the, the second district goes way up in Prince William. We're going to be kind of Stafford centric in this. So I, you know, up front, I apologize if there's anyone here from Prince William because we're going to talk about Stafford. Stafford is a well run county. And it has been from when I got to be chairman and we established a strict set of financial guidelines. At the time, Stafford was on the verge of going junk bonds. We had received a letter warning us that we were in trouble. So we established these strict financial guidelines, and the key is to, to maintain and live with those every year as you go along. And since then, Stafford has now slowly climbed to where it was announced a couple months ago that they now have the highest bond rating that you can get for a, a county of the size of Stafford County. I mean, that to me, that's just one of the accomplishments. Um, just for mm -hmm. notification purposes, last night VDOT announced at the FAMPO meeting, and I was the chairman of FAMPO, I was on it for six years and was the chairman of that for two years, but they were going to extend the express lanes down two and a half months, two and a half miles. And I've been talking to them, working with the president of Transurban and with the, the VDOT commissioner on that now for several months. 
they know me, I can tell you some of them are dreading me getting back in the House of Delegates because I am the conscience of why I've neglected Fredericksburg in the Stafford area. Thank you. So, so some of the questions will be the same as the last time because it's a different district and different um, views and different constituents. But this one is different. Um, revenue. Some people call it taxes. Some people call it tolls. Some people call it fees. Do we need? Do we have enough? Do we need more? If you do, we have too much. Uh, what are you going to do on taxes, fees, tolls, and revenue? Raise, lower, where, when, and why? <clears throat> taxes are always a, a, a touchy subject. Nobody wants to pay more in taxes. But I believe that there are occasions where we've had to do that. And I, as Speaker Howell said earlier, uh, 2313, House Bill 2313, I voted for that transportation bill and was proud of the fact that I voted for it. I alienated a bunch of my no tax friends on that. But the money is going and is dedicated to transportation in the future. Um, the tolls on the, the toll lanes are absolutely too high. And we need to figure out a way to lower those tolls I, I get complaints from those every day. People forget that I'm not in the House of Delegates anymore, and I still get the calls every day. So we're going to work on lowering the tolls. They're going to extend it down two and a half miles, and we're going to see if we can alleviate a big part of the problems here. As far as other taxes, we, the people in this Commonwealth are taxed too much already. Where are we going to get the money, as Ms. Um, the, the candidate before, tied everything back to the expansion of Medicaid. Has anyone ever seen a, a government program that worked the way that they said it was going to work? And save you money? It's going to save you money? No, it's not. It's not going to work the same way and it's going to cost, like, like they mentioned, the, uh, this, these other states who are now billions of dollars in the hole. So we need to learn to live with the money we have, just like we did in Stafford County when I was the chairman of the Board of Supervisors and they've done continually since then um, as a current taxpayer and a homeowner, I know how the taxes are. We just had our car tax come out with the October uh, 3rd or 5th, wherever the personal property taxes do. We see those things come in every year. And when we look at these taxes coming out, we wonder where, where all the money is going. And I'll say the first thing we have to do is the money that we put out, we need our fair share back. We're not getting the money that we put out back here. Once we get our fair share back, we can take that money. And the first thing we need to do to increase our, 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 our taxes, uh, our tax base, is invest in our school. I when I was originally living in uh, Fairfax County, but when we wanted to buy a home, we couldn't afford a house in Fairfax County and put gas in the home. So we had to buy a house here in uh, Prince William. I've been here for almost five years now. Uh, so, uh, with that said, I think that the first thing we looked at when we moved to Prince William County was the school. And you know that uh, if you have a small family, you want to look at the schools first. If you invest in the schools, people will move closer here. Unfortunately, in Prince William County, about 80% or so of our tax base comes from personal property taxes. Well, people are leaving the area because transportation is bad. The schools aren't, uh, teachers are leaving the county because they're not getting paid. Obviously, I just told you about my daughter. So who would want to move to the county when people are leaving the county? So, you know, a, a house it get, brings in no revenue if nobody lives there. So I think we need to work on our schools first, invest in our children, people start moving back, and then we can start building our jobs around these school and people uh, so we can live closer to, to where we uh, to live. So that's my, my tactic. Thank you. So we'll have another, another different question. So the candidates are our last race. You could probably hit each other's house with a stone. Uh, in this race, we have one candidate from Stafford, one staff, uh, candidate from Prince William. So my question is, is a mirror question. Mr. King, how do the Stafford residents know that you will understand and work in our interest? And Mr. Dudenheffer, how do the Prince William res res residents know that you will understand and work in their interest? Mr. King, you're first. Well, um, First thing is, uh, I'm not foreign to uh, to Stafford. My daughter goes to Stafford Dance right down here. My uh, my oldest daughter's autism came down to Stafford for uh, 
her speech therapist, they have services down here in Stafford that they don't have in Prince William. So I know some of the things that we have here. I have a, t a sister that's a teacher at one of the high schools here. So I know about Stafford. I'm not, just because I don't live here, don't mean I don't use the services. I come down here and visit and eat and have a good time. I uh, So I'm, I'm familiar with the place. Uh, at, and like I said, uh, I've only been in the area here for, for five years. And I'm willing to work with uh, people in Prince William and Stafford to find out what all the issues are. Of course, this is my first time running, but I'm open to work with, with both sides and hear what the issues are so we can make sure that we take care of uh, both places because I'm the delegate for Prince William and Stafford, not just Stafford. So I have to make sure that all of our kids have a teacher, all of us have transportation, so we share the roads. There's no Democratic 95 or Republican 95, it's just our 95. We share all these things. And I think that with that said, we can work together to do uh, to make it work for everyone, not just people that like us. Well, I'm not a new candidate. And I've served the people in Prince William County already. I worked and attended many meetings and worked on issues to get the Route 1 corridor up in Prince William uh, fixed and try to get money put on it so they could six-lane that. And they're only sporadically getting that done. I worked with the people in Belmont to work on a promised bridge that they had that was going to get them into the, um, get them direct access to the interstate. I worked and got the roads in Quantico Town resurfaced along the way. I'm endorsed by the Prince William Association of Realtors. I'm also endorsed by the Prince William Chamber of Commerce. They know the work that I've done. I had the highest rating from the Prince William Chamber of Commerce my last year in the House of Delegates. And that was because their number one priority was the, the House Bill House Bill 1213, I get their, whatever, the, the, the transportation bill that was out there. And that created a bond between me and, and many of the businesses. I, I've knocked on all the doors on all the businesses. I've, several of them have my signs in their yard. I know what they're doing. So there's no, I work really close with Jerry Foreman, the mayor of Dumfries. I've, um, you know, again, I've already been there. I've uh, worked on issues. I've, I've probably toured most all the schools that are in Prince William County. I'm known there by a large number of people, and I'm going to continue to work that way. So the next question is also a new question. When you thought I was out of new questions. Low income, disabled, <coughs> mentally disabled. What is the state's responsibility to these groups? If your position is that we want to do more or need to do more, how will we pay for those services? Mr. Gutenberg. We certainly have a responsibility, uh, especially in the area of mental health. I mean, those are the guys carrying the guns around that are uh, shooting people, and we, we don't want that. We need to invest more time. We have a senator from Western um, western part of the state whose son tried to kill him and ended up killing himself who was mentally ill. So we have an, a, uh, a need to go ahead and invest in things. The speaker talked about the $150 million that was invested last year. Uh, we need to continue to find ways to get those services to the people who need them. As a deputy sheriff of Fairfax County, we have a lot of mentally ill people uh, in our jail. We just had this tragedy happen. Uh, with Natasha, I can't remember her last name, but um, it was a, it was a tragedy. We have too many mentally ill people in, in prison, and we don't have the services to take care of them um, outside in the world. So they wind up in jail. We have veterans, homeless veterans, that are in jail that I see all the time. We actually have a new veterans docket that uh, Scott Sherbo helped uh, push through. We need to take care of these people. Where the money's going to come from is a big issue. One option would be to expand Medicaid. The other option is to use it as the money that we have. But we have to find a better way to take care of these people because we have elderly who are, who are going older. People are living longer because of our modern technology. And uh, <coughs> veterans who would normally die from regular you know, wounds, they're living longer. And we, they all need services. So we have to find a better way and find the money somehow to make sure that we take care of all the mentally ill that's out there. And I think it is definitely our responsibility because that's your mother, that's your your sister, and all of us want to be old one day. So 
so we need to make sure we have family care for everyone. Thank you. So in the last forum we asked about education, I'm going to be a little more specific this time. There's a number of ways families choose to educate their children, public schools with, with teachers, homeschool, private schools, online schools, vouchers. What is your approach to education? Should we be doing more in vouchers, homeschool support, online schools, or putting more money into public teacher salary? There seems to be an issue there, and it seems in some people's mind to be a zero-sum game. So what is your position on vouchers, homeschool, and private school versus <clears throat> increased money to public schools, or, or what's the mix? And uh, first on this one is Mr. King. Thanks. First, I want to say I'm a, a proud public uh, public school student. I graduated from uh, D Creek in Chesapeake, so I'm from 757 here in Virginia. And I will say that everyone in my family went to public school, so I, I didn't have the privilege to go to a private school nor the money. I come from a poor family. And I will say that I think I'm doing okay. Uh, I believe that uh, education is a cornerstone for us, and we have to have affordable education not only for K 12. We have to have for, for, for college. Fortunately, I served on my country and I have the GI Bill that's helping me go through George Mason right now. Without that, I don't know how I would afford these, these costs. I mean, just look at the uh, parking pass is $250 a semester. I mean, it's ridiculous. One book is 200 bucks. How do you afford these things? So we definitely have to look at, uh, I, I graduated from Nova right here and uh, I went to Annadale and so I graduated there in 2013 and that helped um, save some costs. But uh, we definitely have to look at, uh, A, ra raising the quality of our education, and at the same time, take care of our teachers in the public system. Uh, they say that the public system is failing. Well, if you defund it, of course it's going to fail. If you take money from roads, you take money from anything, of course it's going to fail. Uh, private schools, I can't speak too much to it because I haven't had the experience to have my children there. But I will say that I have a son who's three years old now, and uh, we have him in the pre-K program that we pay for. And, uh, he, he is doing really good, in it, but we can't keep him in there. He's going to go to public schools. But I definitely think that uh, we need to find a balance to make sure that the, the kids that are they're using these vouchers are, are, are that they can, they can have vouchers to use if, if they need to go to these schools that they can afford. Sir. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Taxpayers should have choices. You know, if you feel better putting your kid in a public school, then they should get a good education in public school. I raised my kids, all went to public schools here in Stafford, and two of my five grandchildren right now go to public school. But one of my, one of my kids, one of my daughter-in-laws, decided that they needed to homeschool a son. They didn't think he was getting advanced fast enough. That was her choice to do that, and she's invested an incredible amount of money and time into doing that, and you can see the results in my little grandson. Vouchers, look at the voucher program that went on up in Washington, D.C. That was a huge success and offered tremendous education for some people who were in the inner cities and the ghettos who couldn't, couldn't get a good education there, but because of the voucher system, they were able to, to go to a school of their choice with good teachers. And what happened? Because of political concerns, they took it away. So who did they hurt? They hurt the very people who they claim they're trying to help. Choices are what we really need to have. Everyone should have a choice in where they send their kids and how they're educated. And I think that that's, that's important. Now, how do we fund schools? You know, we, as the chairman and as on the Stafford County Board of Supervisors, you have to understand how schools are funded. And they only get about a third of their income, or maybe a little more than that, comes from the county. And another, a little more than a third, comes from the state. And then they get special programs that come from the federal government. So, the schools decide how much teachers get paid, the school system, not, not the House of Delegates that decide. But we should be continuing to increase and to improve the education in our systems, but we should provide people with choices. Number one priority is, number one, uh, why it's your number one priority and how you're going to achieve it in Richmond, in Richmond if you're elected. Mr. Guttenberg, your question. I have a... Uh, I've not hidden the fact that I think transportation is our number one issue here. We can improve in education, we can improve in health care. There's so many different areas, but I've knocked personally on over 3,500 doors 
in this region in the second district, and I can tell you every single person when you ask them what's their problem, they tell you it's transportation. It's getting clogged on 995. It's having to take 40 minutes just to get to the interstate now through several little roads that are out there. So I plan on working first and foremost on transportation. Not all, but just first and foremost because that was the question. Um, a big part of working inside the transportation network inside the state of Virginia is understanding how it works. No one delegate is going to walk in and change the entire system and tell you that they're going to move the metro to Woodbridge. You know what? In my first race, they've said that every race that I run for the House of Delegates, that they want to move the metro to Woodbridge. Now they want to move it all the way to Stafford. Um, you know what the Washington Post called that? When they endorsed me over my Democrat opponent, they called it high in the sky because it's just not realistic. But I can tell you, I think we need to start moving in that direction. We need to study that. I was the only Republican in Prince William, or anywhere, I think, for that matter, who endorsed Congressman Connolly's uh, proposal to, um, to have the federal government provide million, several million dollars to fund that, that study for alternative um, transportation through that corridor. And I will continue to support his efforts. <laughs> um, I believe that the number one problem would be uh, education. Education is the cornerstone of, of our democracy. We have to make sure that we have our children are educated. Uh, we have to make sure that we have options for children who can't go to college. Military is one. Vocational school, job poor. We need to make sure that we have affordable uh, education for our children so they, so they can work. I think that uh, we need more jobs here in the first room and start more quality jobs and education is the key to success. I believe that as long as we have an educated workforce and we take care of our teachers, give our kids what they need because we're lacking in STEM, I think that we need to focus on those issues first. I think if we build an education base first, everything else can be built around it. But we definitely have to work on education first because we rely on our teachers every day, five days a week, to take care of our children. We trust them to teach. And I, I don't know about you, but <laughs> my daughter came to me and she said, uh, she's going to tell me how, my, how many grams of sugar is in her cereal. And I was like, whoa, there's too much sugar? She said, yes. I'm like, wow, then the kids are learning so much more. We have to make sure that they have the technology that they need and the tools so they can succeed. Thank you. Okay, for the last question, I'm going to go back to heroin again. Again, a lot of us don't uh, see that scourge in our county. Uh, and I'm going to, if this is a personal issue to me, a friend of ours, son, 19 years old, track team star, a freshman at VCU, died. But we don't, you know, when you die of heroin, you die of respiratory arrest, you die of cardiac arrest. And that's how it's shown in the paper. We don't see, out of the privacy of our friends and neighbors, we don't often see what's behind those causes of death. So heroin touches <coughs> all of us. Many of us don't know it. So I want specifics. <coughs> what can you do in Richmond to save our children, our 16, 18, 20-year-old children, from this horrible scourge that they don't understand? And Mr. Dunhepper, you're I'm sorry, Mr. Oh. <laughs> um, I think the first thing we have to do is have awareness that there's a problem. You can't treat the issue not unless you know what the problem is. And when we're denying that there's an issue, that's the first problem. So first is acknowledgement. I think the second thing is awareness. We need to teach our children at a young age about drugs and not let them hear it on TV or see it somewhere. We need to teach them first before they get the bad knowledge. And, and all these things that's happening with heroin and other drugs, these are all effects. We need to treat the cause. And some of these causes, you know, illness could be physical abuse at home. People do drugs for different reasons. And we need to look at uh, spending services for these people to, to take care of the, the root and stop looking for a cure. We need to be preventive and be proactive. A lot of times we wait and be reactive to situations like we are doing right now, trying to figure out how to do that. We should be proactive. And I think that, like I said, awareness will be the first thing and uh, increase the mental health services for, for children when they're smaller and uh, awareness will be I couldn't agree more with what he just said. <laughs> Training and awareness is really what, what we need to do in that. Um, 
but there are programs that are being done. The Commonwealth's attorney here in Safford County has a heroin program now that they have instituted that is working on this specific issue here in Stafford County. It, it's really horrendous. It really damages and hurts families, and we certainly don't need that. I guess I'm a little bit older than Mr. King. I, I you know, I kind of grew up in the from the drug age all the way now. There's the there's always a drug that seems to be the Cadillac of the time or the one that's being used. Um, but they'll always find a new drug that's out there. We need to. Um, provide the awareness and the training of the kids in the schools, I believe, when they're young enough and still impressionable enough to understand what we're, what we're saying and what we're trying to do. Thank you. So we've covered our six questions, and I'll turn the floor back to Mr. Dudenhofer for your two-minute closing comments. I want to thank the NAACP for having us. Uh, I like the new forum format. It's um, a little more, um, I think, responsive by having it broken down by uh, just two candidates at a time. Um, in, the few, in the past, we used to have you know, 10, 12, 15 candidates on the stage at a time. And it was uh, by the time the second person got asked the same question, they already, he already knew. I, I believe in part of what he said, and part of what he said, and part of what he said. Um, and so it was very difficult. This is much better. And I appreciate the, uh, the change in format. <clears throat> I. Um, I want to get back to Richmond because there's a lot of things I left on the table that didn't, didn't get done. I passed Blennis Law, and with the help of Speaker Howell, who trained me in how to get bills passed, I had to drop things off of that bill that were very important to the family and me and the American Heart Association that we wanted to get. But he told me, he said, Mark, get a bill passed, and then next year come back and let's add to it. Let's, do, let's fix it. Let's polish it each year until the bill says everything that we want to do. And I didn't get an opportunity to do that. And I want to go in and do that. That's only one of the cases. I have several issues on veterans issues. Um, I, I understand the problems that Stafford has and Prince William has with growth. I don't think anybody here would agree that we have a problem with people moving out. We have a problem with too many people moving in. And we need to manage the growth. And I've put forward legislation on, on how to fix those things hasn't been overly successful because there's so many so many special interests that work against trying to give a fast growth county like Stafford the tools they need to manage their growth. So again, I want to go back and, and continue the work that I did. Uh, I know many of you, uh, many of you from the NAACP have worked closely on issues. My door is always open uh, and I encourage you to please come and tell me the issues that are important to you and I'll work really hard to get get resolved or get answers for them. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd say uh, thank you for everyone coming out. Thank you, NLA to be Stafford. Uh, I believe that I'm the man to get it done. We have a lot of issues here. Some of these issues aren't new. They've been here for years. And we have the people in the office that's been here singing the same song. We have the same problems. I know change is slow, but we need to think outside the box and find some new ideas and new ways to, to get these things done. I think we definitely have to work on education first, and then work on transportation, and we need to bring uh, more quality jobs here, not just to Stafford, but Prince William County. I want to be the delegate for the whole uh, district, not just Stafford. I, I think that that's a very big distinction between me uh, and my opponent. I also want to say that I want to bring the attitude that I had in the military, and I want to bring it down to, uh, uh, to the House of Delegates. That is this. When I was in Iraq, I served in Iraq uh, War One and Three. I was there before everything started. I was there a uh, year after that, so I spent two years over there. When I was over there, I met a lot of friends, a lot of different people. Some were Republican, some were Independent, some were Democrat, and it didn't matter. You know why it didn't matter? Because we were over there to get the job done. We didn't care if you were gay, if you were straight. It didn't matter. None of this matters. It doesn't matter who gets credit on the bill. That doesn't matter. All I care about is getting the job done and working with both sides to get the job done. Thank you. So I'd ask our candidates to stand so we can thank you for your time tonight.